youtube.com slash mayhew mayhem that's youtube.com slash m-a-y-h-e-w m-a-y-h-e-m Hello and welcome to another episode of 30 Minutes of Man. I am your host, my name is Michael Mayhew, and I am here with my co-hosts. Nick from YouTube.com slash the Tic Tac Man. And joining me is the intergalactic space slug that I am chained to. What's up everybody? It's me, Greg. As I said, welcome to 30 Minutes of Mayhem, the podcast your mother can be ashamed of. And tell me, Greg, why is this the podcast your mother can be ashamed of? Well, that's a very good question there, Mike. I mean, what is shame? And I mean, what is you know the what, act Greg? Of being... I, Greg, I don't, I don't mean to cut you off, but I really need to address this. You know how over the seventy-five previous episodes to this, many times I have brought up the fact that my dick is like a tuna can, small, lot of girth, right? We, uh, yeah. So uh, we, we, we've been over that before, and there's been many people that have said, "There's no way. There's no way." that your dick can be that small. I can only vouch for myself so much, and people don't, oh, you're just saying that. No, what I want to do to prove that I am telling the truth, I want to have an open invite to any of the females that I have performed coitus with to come on the show and uh, testify about the size of my penis. That's an open invite to any of those females. So if you are one of those females and you're listening right now, contact me, we'll set something up, we'll bring you on the show, and uh, you can testify that uh, I am telling the truth, or maybe you're going to disagree, but let's be honest. We know you're not going to. So if you know any of these people, you can contact them personally, message them, send them a text message, whatever, and tell them that they're more than welcome to come on the show, get in contact with me, and we'll make it happen. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the reason why this is the podcast your mother can be ashamed of. If you've listened to the previous episodes, you will notice that uh, James is not on here. So I don't know where he is. So we're going to go ahead and give him a call right now, live, and uh, see why the fuck uh, he's not on here. So, oh, it's ringing. I'm sorry, the person you are trying to reach has a voicemail box that has not been set up yet. Oh, Please, try uh, your call again later. Good. Uh, fuck you. Of <laughs> fucking course. What the fuck is that? That is his voicemail not answering because he hasn't set up his voicemail box. So now I don't know what we're going to do. I have an idea. Alright. Well, it's bad enough that it might just work. I'm open to ideas at this point. Alright, I'll have to go call for him. <laughs> <clears throat> Emmanuel! Hey! Que poisson! Que poisson! Hey! Emmanuel! A key! A key! Emmanuel! I speak English, you know. What the hell's going on? Well, you see, I picked up a new gardener when I was in Mexico. Oh, Jesus Christ. You, you know what? We're, we're just gonna go to commercial and get this straightened out. You ever been watching Bukaki porn and want to hear something other than the guys groaning as they burst on the girl's face? Well, I have the solution for you. 30 Minutes of Mayhem gives you an enjoyable listening experience, and it's easily accessible on YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, and Spreaker. While watching a girl getting bathed in and gargle gallons of guy goo. 30 Minutes of Mayhem, the podcast your mother can be ashamed of. Everyone. I'd like to introduce you to my friend I made in uh, Mexico. His name is Emmanuel. He is my gardener slash pool boy slash hetero life mate. Say hola, hola, Emmanuel. Hola, Emmanuel. So, Nick, why are you being such an asshole? Clearly, he speaks English. Well, I met him in Mexico, so I assume all he does is speak Spanish, and he d- tends to my garden. <laughs> you guys, hetero, hetero life mate, uh, I mean... Previous things you've told us about him is totally not hetero. Like, you guys have very vigorous and very violent homosexual intercourse. You see, you have to do what you have to do when you're in prison in Mexico. See, Mike, that's, that's, just, that's just how me and Emmanuel pass the time. Okay, so I don't want to get involved with uh, whatever it is that you did or didn't do, because I'm not, clearly, I'm not uh, exactly sure if we've cleared all that up. But uh, speaking of very vigorous... 
uh, violent sexual intercourse. One thing that's definitely been known about Greg since the beginning of the show, and if this is the first episode you've ever listened to, obviously you don't know, so you're going to find out now. Greg though has his V-card, so I want my life's mission now to be for Greg to, like, turn that in. So we need to we need to make that happen. I mean, hashtag take Greg's V-card. I want him to, to turn that in. So that is going to be a mission not only of my own, but a mission of 30 Minutes of Mayhem from here on out. So we got to figure something out. Ladies. If you're interested in taking Greg's V card, email us 30 minutes mayhem at gmail.com. You can also tweet at us 30 M I N S of Mayhem on Twitter or on Facebook. You can message us uh, if you're interested in uh, taking Greg's V card. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out, but it is my mission from, uh, from here on out. That is my mission. I'm sure in his wealth of knowledge, he knows how to pleasure a woman. He'll find it deep down inside. Speaking of finding it deep down inside, would you ever try pegging? Okay, so maybe one of you or all of you or a listener doesn't know what pegging is. So, um, Nick, I know you may or may not have experience, but we'll get to that. Pegging is when a man is penetrated by a female anally via a strap-on. So you're being fucked in your ass by a female with a strap-on. And the question I'm asking to you guys, and I will answer myself, is would you ever try it? I'd like to think that I was adventurous enough to uh, actually try something like that, but... um, You'd like to think you're adventurous enough to get butt fucked by some chick? Yeah, I mean, I I would like to think that, but I mean, I just... I, I don't know, man. I mean, I just I'm I'm very protective of my bunghole. Okay, I mean I, I well, I, is it because you fear that if you are butt fucked by some chick that she will rip open your skin zipper? Yeah, that, that 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 is a possibility. I mean, that is that is one one reason. I mean, uh, even if she doesn't rip open my skin zipper, I mean, just the idea of like her just like tearing open my asshole. Like, I mean, that is that just does not it does not sound fun. Okay. Well, Greg, I've, uh, I've I've been I've been in the bathroom after you've taken a shit and forgot a flush. I don't think ripping open your asshole is the uh, first of your concerns. <laughs> may, 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 maybe you should be more concerned about the skin zipper if she hits that at a wrong angle. I do have to say that like that that's another fear because I have heard of people who like do the butt stuff that the uh, butt they, stuff. If they don't, <laughs> hashtag, if they don't hashtag d a b u t t s u f f butt stuff all <laughs> one word. <laughs> uh, like I was trying to say, like if you don't prepare for it correctly, there's a possibility that when they pull out, you shit yourself. Actually, uh, I have a friend, and I don't mean that isn't like doctor. My dick doesn't wear. Uh, my friend's dick doesn't wear. I, you know, point being, I have a friend that may or may not have a story about uh, shitting all over his girlfriend. But um, anyway, so Greg, how how are you supposed to cash in your V card if you're not willing to get butt fucked by some chick? I mean. If if it comes to that, then yeah, I mean, I'll I'll try it. I mean, uh, I mean, I'm not so like if super that, if pumped that, up for it, but I mean, I'll, I'll try so it. So if, if that's the catch, Greg's like, well, if I get to eat that puss, I'll let her fuck me in the butt. Like, what is that? Is that what you're what you're getting at? Pretty much, yeah. Not only just that, I, I'm thinking about hasn't there previously been a time that Nick may or may not have worn a devil mask and butt fucked you, or is, is that like different because he's a man? It's, it's part of me. It's bit. You can feel the warmth of it. It's not just this cold, hard, totalitarian dick going up your... I was going to say dictator, but I was like, no, just cut it off, dick. Dick just going right in your rectum, you know? So, speaking of dick going in your rectum, Nick, what, what do you think about it? I have to say that being a male, I know I have a prostate up there somewhere. Mm-hmm. At least God, I hope so. I play dominant enough in the bedroom that I'd be willing to allow it, actually. Ooh, see, he... It changes when he says that he'll allow it because he's still someone in control there. Yeah, uh-huh. but it's just that there's days where I don't want to be the dominant one. And, you know, if that's the trade off I have to take for some of the crazy shit I've been able to pull off for being the dominant one, I think a dildo in my ass is the least of my worries. Emmanuel brings up a good point here is you say you'll allow it because by allowing it, you are in fact still technically being the dominant one i'd hate to have to wake up and i'm just like oh i'm tied to the bed and then all of a sudden i just feel it drag across my back towards my ass and i'm just like oh no using reverse psychology for reverse roles you see uh emmanuel what do you think way in here as you may or may not know president antonio banderas actually outlawed all pegging in mexico it's very low-key 
yeah, you're not allowed to really talk about these sort of things when you're over there. That's probably why so many people actually come to America because is they that, too is that why you want came to be to fucked America in the ass. Because, no, I, I so came for know. other reasons. I'd rather not disclose, but I will say uh, pegging is a, it's considered a problem over there. They look at it as a mental illness. So now that you were uh, border hopped or whatever it is that you've done, because I don't want involved with that. I know you're Nick's gardener apparently now. Uh, I don't want involved with any of that. His grass cutting rates are unbeatable. Like I am telling you, like the local uh, kid does it for like 40 bucks for per acre. He cuts it literally in half and says, fuck that kid. I don't have grass currently where I live, so that's not an issue for me. But uh, now that you're in America and it's not nearly as frowned upon in America, I mean, don't get me wrong, it's still frowned upon in America, but uh, now that it's not, uh, does that change your perspective at all? It does It does not. I, I feel bad for those who enjoy the pegging, but I am not one of those people. Me, I've always said, like, there's no way, I'm not going to do that. Nick also brought up the point of uh, about the prostate up there. I think we've previously talked about this, but I've always thought about, like, because I've never had any sort of prostate stimulation, and I know people that have, and they're like, dude, fucking best orgasm ever. And I'm like, sitting there like, yeah, that's cool and all, but I'm not, like, trying to finger my ass or have somebody else finger my ass or, or, or fucking ram me with a strap on. I'm like, I'm not trying to have that happen. Well, then I'm always... well that's the major difference there, isn't it? Because what we're talking talking about there's finger and then we have an entire strap on that's probably much much longer than any finger one person can't possess we're talking about and different levels of penetration here. unless you're e fucking t i mean then you know <laughs> going but, deep uh, on that one going straight i don't want to go back home <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's so many levels to how funny that joke actually was. So you no, know, the whole the whole point of what I, what I was getting at here is I've always said no, nah, no, no. But then I thought about like, what if these people are right? What if th- this is the best thing on the face of the planet, and it's something that I've always been missing out on? What if I eventually, you know, decide fuck it, I'll try it, and then. I have this uh, prostate-induced uh, orgasm that's like the best thing on the face of the planet and practically puts me in a coma because of how good it is. Right, what, if that, what if that's that? And I'm like, oh my God, what have I been missing my whole fucking life? <laughs> Jesus just, Christ. It just, it just like got a flash. you just like your body convulsing and then your head hitting a pillow and just, just drooling. And I'm just like, uh The older I, I get and the now over three years that it's been since I uh, last had... Uh, intercourse, I sit there and think, you know what? Fuck it. At this point, there's pretty much about it. I, I, I would try it. Fuck it. Why not? What else do I got to do with my life? I got to, I got to look forward to social security and death. And it's most likely going to be in the reverse order from what I just listed it. So social security is not even going to exist by the time that I get to that age. And I'm probably not going to exist by the time I get to that age. So what else do I got to look forward to? Might as well live it up while I can. And if that's getting fucked in the ass by some chick with a strap on then fuck it well on that note let's go to another commercial break here and these are new things for the show normally we cut the promotion at the beginning of the show but we've now uh doing these pre-recorded commercials to switch things up and try a little uh something a little different so take a commercial break hi frank here feel like you're not getting enough pussy on your dick dick feeling a little dry balls not getting bounced on enough i got the solution right here a 30 minutes of mayhem shirt and it's guaranteed to get you laid don't believe me just listen to these satisfied customers ever since i started wearing my 30 minutes of mayhem shirt i get pussy five times a day now thanks mom for buying me the shirt God down there, God down there, I get my shirt, I porky pig in that some bitch. I tell you what, I'm only wearing that shirt when I'm fucking a bitch in the ass. Goddamn animals. Do animals count? Is that part of this thing? What if I'm fucking my cousin? If I'm fucking my cousin, does that count too? What about homosexuality? Is there any specific thing that we are disregarding when it comes to whether these shirts will get me laid or will they will not get me laid? Now I tell you what, well fuck it. If I'm porky pig and goddamn shit, these fucking things work. Are you ready to roll around in a wheelchair the rest of your life because your pelvis got pulverized by pounding so much pussy? Then roll on over to mayhumayhem.spreadshirt.com and get laid today! Warning, 30 minutes man cannot guarantee wearing this shirt will get you laid. Results may vary. All right, so for our, our second topic here, I saw I saw this on the news uh, a while ago. It was about a person, a transgender person, going through the the whole change. I believe it was from male to female, but I could it could have been the other way. I I don't remember, but it's not not necessarily relevant. But they were going through the whole change, or trying to at least, while 
still in high school. So my question is, should that even be allowed? Are you mature enough at that point in your life to make that sort of decision? I know it's, I mean, it's not even really our right to say anything of like that. But when I think about myself back in high school compared to myself now at the pretty much at the end of my 20s unfortunately I'm, i don't identify as a female because if i did because of how small my dick is i could like have it flipped inside out like i got normal size regular ass balls right if i had my dick inverted and then they would have all the extra room for the balls to turn it into a vagina i might be better off but unfortunately i don't identify in that in that way but i think about myself back when i was in high school i was nowhere near mature enough to make that decision because not mature enough to make that point of, uh, that type of decision that big of a decision what do you, what do you guys think no they're not mature enough whenever you hit like 18 you're like ah oh, yeah i can vote but i can't do really real adult things so i'm just gonna try and get my dick wet what the fuck the most irresponsible actions i've made were probably before the age of 22 yeah that's the, the whole point of like what i was getting at like the oh, most yeah. irresponsible shit i've ever done uh, in my life none of it's even major stuff but it was all especially when i was in high school you know like everyone does that that's how every everyone is except for you know some people don't do like, you're still shit but fucking young there's still a level of angst there's still a level of figuring out who the fuck you are I know people who are 27 years old and dist- and determining now that maybe I'm attracted to not the opposite sex. It takes yeah. fucking time to understand who you really are. Some people would make the argument that like, you know, because uh, because you are you are born that way whether you identify as male or female, uh, whether you're gay or straight or whatever whatever it is, whatever is going on with you that you're born that way so because you're born that way you should be able to make that life altering decision at the high school ages Hmm. my opinion as you all know i've never been anti whatever except unless it's like anti stupidity and anti assholes but i've never been like against anybody what's Um, wrong with butt stuff what's wrong with butt stuff weren't you just talking about butt stuff earlier (laughs) i am pro (laughs) anal just... Yeah, yeah, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, what I was trying to say is that I believe that what you should do, because like you said, when you're a teen, you are going through so many changes in your life, not just physically, like through puberty and everything, but like emotionally and mentally and everything. You got so much shit going on in your life at that time. I feel that if you were beginning to think maybe I am transgender or whatever, what you should probably do first, in my opinion, is think long and hard about it. Like really and think hard. about, go over like things that you've felt throughout your life, how you've felt about certain things throughout your life. I feel like a good thing to do would be before you begin doing the whole transitioning thing at the very least just all you do just wear the clothes of the gender you identify with and try and live as that gender for a while without actually like you know changing anything in your body you know because you're a teenager i mean you if you after a while you feel you know what this really isn't me after all then you figured out that it's not who you are you have a new lease on who you are and how you feel in your own skin and that but if you do begin to feel more comfortable that way and you do begin to feel like this might be who i am then yeah go uh, go ahead uh, but don't just immediately jump into anything like that because there is i mean you just have to feel things out and just take things one step at a time. You don't want to end up ruining your life as opposed to finding out more about yourself before you make such a huge decision. So that begs the question, um, Nick, if Greg was to have his penis inverted right now, would you have sex with him after he was all healed up? If I was a part of Take Greg's Z card, yeah, of course. Pound, take Greg's Z card. But probably not, no. <laughs> By the way, uh... Nick, you goddamn son of a bitch. I'm sorry, but but my grandfather's name was actually Greg, so I wouldn't have sex with you either. Yeah, that's fine. I, I mean, you're not really my type anyway, so... Are we concluding here that uh, even if Greg was had turned himself into a woman he would still ha- he would still wouldn't be able to cash in his v-card is that what we're gathering here i mean much, if yeah. he went I mean, to any I, truck stop i'm 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 sure with a vagina at a truck stop he he would leave there with at least three dicks having been in him that day 
I mean, you know, the second I would get naked, somebody would just be like, you know what? Never mind. I'm not in the mood. You're not making this an easy sell, by the way, Chris. We want there to at least be like an air of mystery, of suave as to how you look, even though we post pictures of you all over the place. Yeah, I'm pretty yeah. sure after they see those pictures, you know, it's going to be a little harder. Probably going to have to I pay bet. some I, good I, money. I hope to get it is. It. So what you're saying is we need to target blind females. So uh, <laughs> any blind females that are interested in uh, hashtag take Greg's V card, um, go ahead and uh, either email us or uh, message us. Tweet us. I don't know how all that works because I don't know any blind people. But uh, so <laughs> it's back not Morris to, code. So e- Emmanuel, I know that uh, I know down in Mexico, big lady boy scene. Oh yes, very. My own mother actually. I thought that was Thailand. That's, uh, I, I know it's Hawaii. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> what is Mexico? <laughs> what is Mexico but the Thailand of the uh, of the Gulf of the U.S. Well. I must say that Greg had a lot of the same points that I was thinking with this because I I knew one transgender person who was still in high school and going through the transition, but they but they weren't doing anything medical until they were an actual adult. I think that's safe because that's a permanent procedure. You might identify as the opposite sex, and that's perfectly fine. I'll admit I was a incredibly ignorant de- down in Mexico when it came to understanding transgender people. I just, you know, I couldn't comprehend it. You know, the pastor told me it was a sin and, and then we all believed him, that old chestnut. There's a point of no return, basically. Yeah. Yes. Just do everything yeah. up until that point, until you are absolutely certain. I know how the male to female works, but I don't know how the female to male works. So I need to Google that and uh, uh, probably watch it. A- uh, uh, probably a horrible, horribly graphic video. Just like the 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 one time I, I saw a male to female, and it was an actual like the actual surgery, and it was graphic as fuck, and it 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 made my dick and balls hurt really bad. I'm not. Uh, oh, I, I had. I couldn't make it through, so I, I can only assume that it would be just as hard to watch in, in the reverse. I mean, basically any kind of surgery video is going to be really, really, really fucking uh, hard to watch. Not not really. I mean, if you're like, oh, I'm going to watch somebody get their gallbladder taken out, or I'm going to watch this penis get turned into a vagina. Oh, I, I would definitely go with a gallbladder. I would... I mean, like, I hate my, I hate my dick. Don't get me wrong. Like, I hate it. It's a fucking embarrassment. It's a goddamn shame. Like, looking at myself in the mirror, like, I already hate myself enough as it is. If I could, like, never see another mirror in my life, I'd probably be better off. And if I could just, like, not exist in the manner in which I do exist, it, it would probably be, like, a good thing. But, like, I hate my dick more than any of that. Even though my dick is the most disappointing thing about myself. It still hurt me so bad, and I was like, "Oh my god, I, I my dick! I just I couldn't, I couldn't do that to you, buddy. I, I know I like I, I hate you and everything that you stand for, and barely stand for at that. Oh, I just I couldn't I couldn't do that to you. I couldn't do that to you, and it hurt deep down inside. <laughs> I could just imagine you you finally decide on the surgery one day, and you're just like one last ride, buddy. Uh, <laughs> Day. Oh, Christ. But I, I have seen the reverse. <laughs> I have seen the reverse. It's uh, actually, there's a, a video series on it. It's called Bible Black. I absolutely recommend looking that up. I have seen that. Uh, what do you mean, the female, female to male? Yeah. Something yep. like that. Yeah. <laughs> You said it's a documentary, and well, by... <laughs> I said it's a series. It's a yeah, oh. it's a uh, uh, it's a video series. Uh, yes, it's called Bible Black. Uh, they I think they also have um about four different uh different ones. I think it's of a other swappings of sorts. Yes. By Greg's reaction, I hear the sarcasm and <laughs> and all of that. So um... <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to get away. Just God damn, God damn, uh, man, yeah, just. Fuck, I'm sorry. I'm 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 trying to be professional here. I'm I, I'm... I, I just can't stop masturbating to that thought though. Uh. <laughs> All right, let's go to uh, let's go to another commercial for fuck's sake. In the arms of an angel. Hi, I'm Michael Mayhew. Will you be the donor for a struggling podcast? Everyday podcasts are recorded, edited, and uploaded. They require your help. Please click the link in the description to donate to 30 Minutes of Mayhem or a small amount via PayPal using 30 Minutes of Mayhem at gmail.com. You'll help rescue yourself from boredom 
and Us From Poverty and provide software, microphones, server space, and love. Donate in the next 30 minutes and you will receive an email confirming your donation. And you'll know that you've given this podcast a second chance thanks to you. Your donation says we're here to stay. Please donate right now. Speaking of uh, transgenders, have you ever realized that the big, hard, throbbing dick that was the great old U.S. of A. that would just go around and fuck the whole world right in the ass has seemed to just split itself and fold inward on itself like a like a transgender's dick and become a giant <laughs> pussy? The question is, has everyone in America become too much of a pussy and is easily offended? Well, considering the fact that a lot of college campuses have what they call safe spaces on them now, I think, yes, I think we have become horribly pussified. We are one step away from becoming Canada because Canada has no swearing zones and you can legitimately get written a ticket for swearing in these areas. Are you fucking kidding me? Oh my god, I didn't know that. God, Canada, I mean, I... You've done some really great things in the past, but goddamn, get your shit together. Craig's like fucking Krispy Kreme, maple syrup, and Tim Hortons. Fucking great shit, and you just have to come in here and be like, oh, no swear zones. Well, I would have been, cl- I would have thrown Rush in there too. Because, yes, Rush, I mean, Rush is definitely Rush. definitely a national treasure. I'm sure they keep them locked up right next to Shania Twain. Has anyone confirmed that that's that that's a legitimate thing? Because I've never heard of oh, this. Oh, yeah, look is it that, up. Look like it up. that's legit. College oh, campus yeah. safe spaces. Look it up. It's a real thing, and it is absolutely retarded. They literally have these spaces where you cannot talk about any controversial topics at all. It's basically just one giant uh, hug box for people who are too much of a fucking pussy to like uh, actually, you know have a dialogue between people who might have different opinions from them. Uh, Greg, a hug box actually kind of sounds pretty awesome, depending on, like, who's in the box. Like, if it's me and, like, 42 other females, other females as if I am a female, my dick is pretty small, but I still have a dick. So if it's me and 42 females and we're all hugging each other, um, I'm kind of down with that, unless they're, like, uh, Elbistos. I know, uh, Emmanuel, you probably know what that is. We. Let me tell you, Uh, a lot of the women who do, uh, uh, who do flock to those, uh, safe space hug boxes are, uh, are what we like to call in the internet land whales or ham planets. (laughs) Oh, Lord. Good gosh. I mean, I've said this numerous times. I'm not into hungry, hungry hippo look. If you pit like 42 of them and then me in there, I'm not cool with that situation. Although it would be cool for once uh, in a very long time being the smallest person in the room. But I'm not, I'm, I mean, you know, whatever. Every, everyone needs a hug every once in a while. If they're even remotely attractive, like I will take fives and above. That's what I mean by remotely because like I'm, I'm saying dead center of the table and above. And uh, they want to hug it out. If they want to have their tits out and hugging it out, whatever, like I'm down. That's cool. I'm not against a hug box. A hug box sounds interesting. And it also, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look it up. There's probably a porn called Hub, a Hug Box now. And uh, I'll, I'll come back to you on that. But um, to answer the actual topic, the answer to that is yes, but not everyone. It's not everyone. So let's clarify that. It's obviously not everyone. The general public, let's just go with that, if they weren't so pussified or whatever term we're using, I wouldn't get the enjoyment out of life that I get. Because, like, the shit that I say, that's just how I am. The reactions that I get from the stuff that I say, you know, like, that wouldn't exist. And I do enjoy that. Why do you think we're so vulgar on the show here? Because, one, that's who we are. But, two, there's also reactions from it. It's just like taking the power away, I guess. You know, like, if someone's like, oh, you're gay. And you're like, oh, yeah, I'll suck your dick right now. And they're like, whoa. Because, like, they're not gonna, they're not going to call you gay anymore because you've taken the power away. Yeah. But at the same time, it can be very annoying because you can't even have conversations with people i mean fuck uh it feels fucking fantastic to be back i would like to thank everyone that's listening greg for being here since the beginning nick well you know you do you emmanuel uh yeah so i don't so this has been another episode of 30 minutes ma'am i've been your host my name is michael mayhew and i have been here with my co-hosts nick and greg check us out on itunes stitcher spreaker youtube android all of those places and donate to us on paypal so that does it for this episode I hope you have enjoyed it, and uh, later, fellas.